Atheist Nomads episode 82, news for February 19, 2015. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. We are the Atheist Nomads bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. This is episode number 82. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Welcome, compadre. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing good. So, one thing I, I want to just get out there, it, I don't think it's enough of a story to really be, be worthy of the, the news section, but I think it's worth talking about in the, the intro. Uh, because okay. as a general rule of thumb, I don't cover news stories that are a private citizen being a bad person. It needs to be institutional or some kind of a high up official in government or a church or some other organization, then I'm going to take it up. But if it's just an individual being a jackass, I leave it alone. And fortunately, the media doesn't always play like that, such as the case of the Chapel Hill shooting. Mm. Uh, this was a, a situation where a atheist shot three Muslims. The reporting from some news outlets is that it must have been a hate crime that it was his his atheist beliefs that were were prompting it. The general gist of the story, though, is it was a longstanding uh, parking dispute. This guy was an asshole, and he liked to carry a gun, and he used it. The police don't think that religion was a motivating factor. His wife doesn't think that religion was a motivating factor. And the family of the victims doesn't think it was a motivating factor. There is no indication that it was. Just because he had views that religion is bad, well, mm-hmm. like us, yeah, doesn't mean he killed people of a particular religious belief because he thought the religious views were bad or dangerous or wrong. Just like a Christian, if, if it had been a Christian that shot them, I wouldn't automatically jump on, well, the Christian shot them because he thinks that they are... Now, they worship God wrong or worship the wrong God. There are things that can make a story actually convincingly sound like religion was a factor. Like a case uh, just this past week in Boise where a woman held down a neighbor with her foot on her throat, telling her, her, her Jewish neighbor, telling her that she had to accept Christ for her to take her foot off. That's some crazy shit. That isn't something I would have talked about otherwise because it was just a a psychotic person being psychotic. Sure. But that is a case where religion as a motivating factor was pretty obvious based on the things that were said. The Chapel Hill story, no indication that it was anything more than a parking dispute and kind of... And an asshole. Yeah. And unfortunately... uh does point out how often parking disputes end up becoming deadly. Uh, It wasn't the first case this year of that happening. The other one didn't make the news, but because one was an atheist and the victims were Muslims, well, it did. And three people. I mean, three people are dead. Well, yeah. Fuck. This is a horrible, horrible thing. And we're not going to belittle that at all. Three people are dead, but... It was a horrible tragedy. Uh, It was three college students... It shouldn't have happened. He was wrong. And frankly, if you're listening to this and you are capable of doing something like that, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Don't want you in our community. Don't necessarily even want you listening to our show. No, fuck it. You can listen to our show. (laughs) We we appreciate the numbers. But no, if you think this is a good thing in any any way or fashion, then fuck you. All right. Uh, I I think we've said enough on that. Uh, what, What do you have for us for history? Oh my goodness, this was a magical day. So for this wonderful date of February 19th, I have this day in history, 1473. 
Nicholas Copernicus was born. So Nick was a Polish Renaissance mathematician and astronomer who formulated a model of the universe that placed the sun <laughs> rather than the earth at its center. Go figure. Man. Uh, the publication of this model in his book, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to nail this, the Revolutionibus Orbium Celestium, uh, or English-ish, uh, on the revolutions of the celestial spheres just before his death in 1543. Uh, you know, considered a major event in the history of science, triggering the Copernican Revolution and making an important cr contribution to the scientific revolution. So, uh, man, all around fairly interesting guy. He'd never married, never had kids, and kind of de dedicated his life to science. Uh, an interesting thing I found when I was uh, looking for well, more recent news about Nick and all this stuff. Uh, uh, let's see. I just found an article from two days ago, which would be the 14th of February. Um, at least 500 antique books, including volumes by Galileo and Copernicus, have reportedly been returned to the Italian libraries three years after they were stolen by the uh, then library director, Massimo De Caro. He God was convicted damn. of having carried out the theft with the several accomplices and sentenced to seven years in prison. So some kind of like fucking uh, Ocean's Eleven kind of style shit. Um the value of the recovered works is more than 2.5 million euros or like four to seven billion dollars in the u.s i think uh despite the worth of the recovered hall authorities say there is still much more work to do because apparently there's at least another 1,000 books that have been recorded missing from the library after DeCaro's theft and the full number is unknown because apparently that library doesn't keep records of the books it has mm. yeah <laughs> so wow other fuck how do you not keep records of books like that? That's what I'm getting the sense of because, well, maybe, you know, he is the head of the library. He could delete those records. That's what I'm guessing possibly. But, <laughs> you know, if, if I didn't return a fucking magazine to my local library, they'd be calling me or like not let me check shit out for like, you know, I don't know, time or some shit like that. So, mm hmm. <laughs> I don't know why they don't have all their ducks in a row there. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Well, so, uh, this day in history, 1957, Falco is born. So yeah, uh, Johann Falco Holzl, I'm sure I nailed that, was an Austrian combo rock pop rap singer rapper guy. Um, I actually really like this guy. It's like Rock Me Amadeus and uh, Der Commissar helped shape some of my earliest childhood. In his childhood, they say Johan auditioned for the Vienna Music Academy at age five, where it was confirmed that he had perfect pitch. And, and I'm sure there's other tall tales about him, but this one always made me chuckle because, you know, he really didn't even his parents didn't like push him into like a, a musical career at that point or anything kind of odd, but yeah, he always grew up having musical instruments like uh, pianos and, you know, just at, at his, at his house apparently. So at least he came from you know, a lot of musical background. Um, uh, anyways, growing up, Falco dropped out of high school uh, around age 16, joined a jazz band and later a, a heavy metal group before going out on his own. Uh, sadly, uh, you know, well, all through the eighties, he had quite a few hits, uh, especially in Europe, uh, finally had some crossover hits in, in the U S and, you know, had the, the rock career that he always dreamed of for, for a while, uh, died off pretty quick in the, uh, early nineties, but, uh, yeah, uh, while planning a comeback, Elko died in a car versus bus, bus crash in 1998. It was found that there was high levels of alcohol, cocaine, and THC in his blood. Uh, inter interesting tidbit, though. His estate claims that he has sold more than 20 million albums and 15 million singles, which makes him the best-selling Austrian singer of all time. <laughs> huh. 
So I don't know if you're familiar with, with Falco at all. Nope. No? Oh. All right. To my knowledge, never heard of him. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, some really good synth 80s pop. And and, a, and some rap is kind of weird for, you know, all in one guy. It wasn't just like run DMC versus Aerosmith kind of thing. Hmm. It was all in one. It's kind of kind of cool. So, this day in history, the year 2002, NASA's Mars Odyssey space probe begins mapping Mars. So, go back a little bit earlier. Uh, the probe launched on the 7th of April, 2001. And when it arrived, uh, I actually kind of find this kind of cool. The probe used a technique called arrow breaking that over many revolutions of the planet Mars, the probe used the atmosphere to slow down instead of using like heavy fuels and rockets, you know, so it saved weight. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, it's best known for its finding of very large quantities of hydrogen on, I think that was May 28th in 2002, so not long after it got there. Uh, large quantities of hydrogen, like within a meter of the surface of Mars. So everybody's thinking that might actually be like standard ice. You know, it'd be pretty fucking cool if it was. Uh, this probe just keeps on ticking though. Uh, it keeps on getting two year extensions every couple of years and, uh, doing a little bit more, uh, work there. And actually there is a pass by going to some comet by some other probe uh, just recently, and apparently the, the this damn probe is still ticking around. So it's like the longest piece of uh, equipment out there that's uh, working as a probe. Well, at least out of orbiting uh, equipment. Yes, yes, because you still have a V'ger, yeah. Voyager. Sorry, sorry <laughs> you Star said Trek. V'ger. Yeah, Star Trek. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing that came to mind. But yeah, um... That's pretty much all that I found that was interesting on this, the uh, 19th of February. Alrighty. And that's going to segue nicely to science and technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, NASA is at it again this time. They've got a new proposal for a submarine on Titan. Hell yeah. This is so far just a, a you know very, very early concept that was showcased by NASA's Glenn's uh, Compass Team uh, at the Innovative Advanced Concept Symposium. Hmm. The, the, the plan here is to go to the, the largest sea on Titan, Kraken Mare, with a autonomous submersible, and it would take uh, 90 days and travel 2,000 kilometers, and it would explore the depths of this uh, very, very strange environment. It would be spending a lot of time under the sea's methane, or the methane sea's uh, surface, um, so it would have a nuclear power plant similar to what uh, Curiosity has, and it would have to surface uh, regularly to transmit data back. I would, I'm kind of curious about that. I mean, Fucking liquid methane has to be really cold. Mm-hmm. So to keep all those electronics working properly, I'm wondering if they're going to use the uh, the nuke reactor as a heat source also. That is uh, definitely a possibility. Uh, you, you wouldn't want it to be too warm, otherwise you might burn off the methane around you, and that could really uh, bad. <laughs> mess up your results. So I'm sure it'd just be a, a sufficiently hardened to be able to handle the, the temperatures. Uh, it, it would be a lot different than the cold temperatures of, of space, uh, since you actually do have particles in contact sapping the heat away from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, you know, this is this is really pretty cool, because Titan, well, it's got methane, a, a hydrocarbon that, you know, conceivably shouldn't necessarily be out there, but it is in huge quantities. And that methane exists very similar to Earth's water cycle, where you get methane rain, and then that forms rivers and valleys and seas. Then it evaporates off and rains back down. <laughs> but all of this is is covered in, in hydrocarbons and could potentially be a, a, a really good uh, possibility for, for life. Now, there isn't any evidence that there's life there, 
uh, you know, the, the very cold temperatures can make it very difficult and, uh, you know, lack of, of H2O, but still really, really freaking awesome. I mean, we have like a whole class of creatures on our planet called what, what they usually call them, uh, extremophiles. So, you know, odd shit happens. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Although our extremophiles do still require water. Sure. But you know, Hey, different planet. In all practicality, it's it's the greatest chance of life anywhere else on, in our solar system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm sure it's a tiny, tiny chance, but hey, it's still pretty fucking cool. Just just to be able to fucking put a submarine on another planet. <laughs> uh huh. On another planet in a methane sea. Yeah. Oh boy, how are they gonna deny this one? Oh, it's in a child's pool somewhere. Uh, The National Academy of Science uh, has issued a uh, two-volume report on Mm. addressing climate change. Uh, The first appears to be kind of reluctantly released or even considered and was done at the request of U.S. intelligence agencies, and that is to do some geoengineering. Mm. Uh, the, The basic concept is you shoot sulfur into the atmosphere and it will help form clouds which will reflect out uh, solar energy and by doing that you could cool off the earth realistically it would take a lot of this uh, but one thing they haven't really figured out yet is what are the, the real world risks this isn't something they've experimented with yet and so while they really don't want to do this uh, they are saying that it might be worth it to do a small trial with just a couple of kilograms of sulfur uh, injected into a cloud to see what happens. Mm. Uh, it would be small enough, and especially if it had sufficient oversight, um, could be safe enough to minimize the potential damage. Although the first thing that comes to mind to me would be this creating acid rain. That's what I was thinking. Um, uh, but the, the basic concept is to mimic what large volcanoes do. The big downside of doing this is once you start, you can't stop because we'd continue to be releasing excess carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And as soon as you stop reflecting off that sunlight, uh, you get very, very rapid global warming. And so it would conceivably have to continue for a thousand years. It also doesn't do anything about ocean acidification. <laughs> We would be continuing to increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which would continue to increase the amount of carbon being sucked up by the ocean, creating very dilute carbonic acid. Uh, not really a good thing. Uh, their, their other report was the idea they really want to do, uh, and this would be build giant carbon collectors to suck the carbon dioxide out of the air and bury it into the ground. Uh, that would be very expensive, take time, and frankly, just getting the funding right now with the way Congress is, it would never happen. Uh, the sulfur idea, that one of the reasons they're wanting to study it is just in case a... I'm sure it'd be a ton cheaper. Well, it's a ton cheaper, uh, and mm-hmm. it's it's easy to do with current technology. They're also mm-hmm. just afraid that somebody else might try it. <laughs> hmm. However, I would say that if if we're going to do this, we'd need to get world buy-in on it. Well, um, with uh, China bypassing us in the green technology you know, very quickly, you know, it's not like we have that great of a green track record anyways. Uh, I think just getting our, our country in line with a lot of the other countries out there would sure be a, a big plus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, as Morpheus said, after the war started, you know, it was us that scorched the sky and, <laughs> and darkened it. So I don't know. Yeah. Who knows what would happen? <sighs> yeah. But kind of uh, concerning that scientists are desperate enough to actually be considering something this drastic. Well, um, I was just reading that. uh uh, okay, I'll admit it. I just saw it on Young Turks that saying uh, we're we're facing like uh, mega droughts around mm-hmm. about 2050. 
that could last like you know 30 years plus kind of like the dust bowl did back in the 30s so that's not a good thing no no and and it's a little bit worse than just those droughts where exercising unsustainable agricultural practices such as cattle and water intensive crops in idaho most irrigation comes from groundwater and the aquifers are all being drained at far faster rates than they refill. Uh, so like take Idaho, for example, any kind of drying will impact Idaho. Uh, Boise would conceivably go from 12 inches of rain a year to six. That would increase the over, or decrease the, the refill rate of the aquifers. And so increasing the rate of that, we're going to run out of water and it'll be a barren wasteland that could support very few people. <laughs> so what I actually predict will happen with that is people from the uh, inner mountain region and Midwest, uh, when it all dries up, the conservatives will move to the Canadian plains and take over and the liberals will move to the coasts. Hmm. Well, that's pretty much happened already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Anyways, moving on. Yeah. Uh, in Sacramento, uh, one of the, the sponsors of the the bill we talked about last time uh, to remove mm-hmm. California's personal belief exemption from, from vaccines, Lorena Gonzalez, uh, she got a call from comedian and actor Rob Schneider. Former comedian and actor. Yeah, best Sorry. known for his role in the horrible, horrible film Deuce Bigelow. <laughs> uh, he he left a message with her staff saying that he was going to spend money against her in the next election. Uh, the, from what I understand, that was actually putting it very, very kindly. Uh, it was a pretty rough, threatening call. Um, basically, that he'll do anything he can to get her out of office. And so she called him back. Yeah. Had a lovely conversation with him. Yeah. Yeah. It took 20 minutes, uh, the way she described it on Facebook. Uh, so we received a phone call from Rob Schneider today where he threatened my staff that he would spend a lot of money against me because of my co-authorship of a bill to increase vaccination rates. When I called him back, he was actually much, much nicer to me. Well, let's be honest. That is 20 minutes of my life I'll never get back arguing that vaccines don't cause autisms with Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Fucking love that line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the good news is if the state Senate passes this quickly, it could be uh, go through the, the assembly in the summer and the governor could have it to sign as early as September. Hmm. Well, that would definitely be a good thing. Yes, it would. And, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I said this on Facebook, but well, something like this. <sighs> Roy Schneider Rob Schneider is basically the guy in the neighborhood that everybody knows is kind of fucked in the head, but nobody does anything about it. I mean, we kind of need to get this guy some help. He's Mm -hmm. one hell of a conspiracy nut now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even just his his statements on vaccines. Uh, He had a, a YouTube video where he said the efficacy of these shots has not been proven and the toxicities of these things are having more and more side effects. Which is so mind-bogglingly wrong. Uh, The efficacy of the shots has been well-proven, and these toxicity claims have not. Ah! (laughs) Hmm. Fucking crazy people. Mm. And uh, not not to say anything against actual people with mental illnesses, especially those who are, are seeking and getting help, but people who have these asinine views and spew them around the world are a, a horrible, horrible breed of uh, scum. And on that note, uh, before we move on to politics and religion, uh, we've got a, a promo to play from Atheists in the Trailer Park. Yay. The Atheist in the Trailer Park podcast. That's the worst. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. 
Join me each week as I read from T.W. Doan's Bible Myths and Their Parallels in Other Religion, or I cover news stories dealing with religion, atheism, secularism, science, and so on, all the while trying to fend off the attentions of my cat. Stop it, Fuzznuts! Cut it out! You can find them at tparkatheist.blogspot.com That's tparkatheist.blogspot.com or find them in your podcatcher of choice. And we also got news that Paul from Coronify Me is doing a relaunch campaign. Uh, he took a two-month sabbatical, uh, but his show is is coming back uh, full force. And uh, he's, he's doing a, a t-shirt uh, campaign. Uh, and these are pretty slick shirts. On the front, they say religion equals fairies before facts. And on the back, you do not have the right to not be offended. So these are pretty slick shirts, and uh, Paul's a damn good guy. So yeah, go give him a listen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we got the link for the the shirts in the show notes. And for politics and religion, uh, our first story is out of Tennessee, and it's a update on a previous one uh, where we talked about the Tennessee woman who is facing charges regarding the faith healing death of her 15-year-old daughter in 2002. Well, actually, this is more appealing it since her probation, which is an awfully light sentence, started a long, long time ago. So her, her lawsuit was that the, the law was too vague, and so she had no way of knowing that it wouldn't apply to her. Uh, because Tennessee, uh, in their law, it is a crime to fail to provide medical care to children unless you rely on prayer alone and that the faith healing is performed by an accredited practitioner of a recognized church or denomination. What that means in plain words is it only applies if you're a Christian scientist. If you're anybody else, you're SOL. Now, the Tennessee but, Supreme... Yeah, you got to be the right kind of Christian. Yeah, the, the kind that lobbied to get all this on the books. Uh, <laughs> the, the Tennessee Supreme Court uh, got it half right. Uh, they, they ruled that... Uh, her conviction stands because the law was sufficiently clear. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't go. They went ahead and said that the law was sufficiently clear. Uh, they should have thrown it out as being either too vague or unconstitutional by granting special privilege to only some people. I'll say something about uh, taking away the protection of children, also. Yeah, protection for children. And moving further south. Uh, Alabama got same-sex marriage. Uh, the Yay. federal judge um, in the case uh, came to the right decision, and the Court of Appeals uh, declined to issue a stay, and then the Supreme Court also declined to issue a stay. And we'll, we'll get Yay. more to that later. Uh, but once this ruling came down, and it was clear that they had to start, Alabama Supreme Court Chief Justice Roy Moore famous for his standoff with the federal court system that lost him his or cost him his job as chief justice uh, over the 10 commandments statue and you know the state capitol uh, he managed to get his job back and he told judges that they don't have to follow the ruling yeah all, all the probate judges across alabama don't have to pay attention to this rule and in fact uh, he would punish them if, if they did. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He said, I think that the definition of the word marriage is not found within the powers designated to the federal government and that he is the only person who could order the state's probate judges to issue mar marriage licenses. And since he wasn't named in the lawsuit, the ruling doesn't apply to him. He is adamant that he will not, absolutely not end up on the wrong side of, of, uh, history but the best line from all of this do they stop with one man and one man or one woman and one woman or do they go on to multiple marriages or do they go on to marriages between men and their daughters or women and their sons right <laughs> yeah so yeah if this happens then incest happens and everybody gets to marry everybody okay. this is I, seems legit yeah yeah with the with the whole you know, constitutional powers thing. Uh, you know, the, 
the federal government can't define marriage, but what they can do is say you have to treat everybody equally, which is what they did. Uh, it all falls under the 14th Amendment. And as far as this slippery slope argument that he employed, uh, I do think this makes the chance of plural, uh, plural marriages coming more likely, just because people will see that alternatives to the, the old school way of doing things don't destroy the world and don't destroy society. However, changing bride and groom to spouse and spouse is a lot different and a lot easier than having to completely redefine how you handle community property and divorces and child custody and all of that. So very, very different situation. And as far as incest, I haven't heard of anybody asking for that. <laughs> That is a totally different issue. Although what's kind of ironic here is his, his big fear of, of making it so that, you know, people of the same sex can get married is it'll make it so the people of the opposite, more people of the opposite sex will be able to get married. Hmm. And that's not what anybody's going for here. <laughs> uh, and then, so most of the, the uh, judges in Alabama uh, followed his advice until... The same federal judge, after somebody, another judge got sued, uh, said that, yes, it does apply to you. You have to start issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples, and anybody else who doesn't think this applies to them can get sued, too. Yeah, that was uh, Don Davis was the probate judge that got sued. Yeah. I love this. Uh, judge, uh, what was it? Um, Kelly uh, Granade? Granade? Uh, yeah, if you don't, if you don't want to marry him, fine, you get added to the lawsuit too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, amazing. I love this lady. One thing that was an interesting twist here is the way a lot of, of judges handle it was they just stopped issuing marriage licenses altogether. <laughs> Most have come around on that. And at least as of midday Friday, uh, that would have been, uh, Friday the 13th. Yay. 50 of Alabama's 67 counties were complying. That could still be a lot better, but hey, it's a lot better. Uh, on I, can't wait to, I can't wait to hear what happens to Don Draper, the, uh, that pr one probate judge. Yeah. Uh, Roy Moore. Uh, Sorry, Don Davis. Anyways, Roy Moore. Go ahead. Roy Moore is, is continuing to double down on all of this. Um, on Fox News... On Sunday, he insisted that he has a moral duty to defy the Supreme Court if they try to change God's organic law. What the fuck? Organic law? I thought that shit was set in stone. Uh, or organic law is a, a legal term referring to foundational documents. So in the mm. U.S., the Constitution would be our organic law. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I forgot. God was the, the main, the head writer. Uh, it, it does seem to be a little bit confusing here as to whether he's saying that God, the Constitution is God's or it's the Bible that he's talking about. He got out there. Yeah, he got way out there. Uh, he, he said, when federal courts start changing our Constitution by defining words that are not even in there, like marriage, they're going to do the same thing with family in the future. When a word is not in the Constitution, clearly the powers of the Supreme Court do not allow them to redefine words or seize power. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states or reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. He was quoting the Tenth Amendment there towards the end. You know what? <clears throat> I seem to recall the federal government having to get involved, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, when they were making it so black and white people could get married. Uh-huh. Seems kind of the same argument to me. And throwing out segregation in schools. Yeah. There's, and this is the thing the South always falls back on. Heck, this is the thing the Civil War was fought over. States' rights. Yeah, sure wasn't racism. That, that, that was, it was, that was, that was, a, that was a happy byproduct. It, it was, uh, the Civil War was really over the, st whether or not the states had the right to have slaves. Uh, the South was afraid that the North would try to, because the North did finally have enough power that they could take away the slaves. They were afraid they would. And so to protect their, their 
states' rights to have slaves, they withdrew from the, the United States, or at least attempted to. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the end result of that, you know, okay, because, yeah, the Tenth Amendment does uh, clarify that any powers not granted to the federal government are reserved to the states or to the people. The Fourteenth Amendment, which was needed after the Civil War and came very shortly after the Civil War, mm-hmm. very clearly states that you must treat all people the same. Good Basically, the 14th Amendment, when it really comes down to it, emphasized the, or to the people part of the 10th Amendment. Said, yes, states, or it didn't say anything that states didn't have power, just that they had to respect their people. Which segues very nicely into the next one. Yes. Uh, the <laughs> KKK has issued a call to arms over Alabama's same-sex marriage ruling. Uh, and this was a, a particular chapter of the KKK in Mississippi uh, that so wait, has... Are you, are you saying that the KKK is on the same side as Judge Roy Moore? Yes. Uh, in fact, <laughs> uh, quoting Brent Waller of the, UD, of, the, of the United Dixie White Knights, uh, he, he's actually their imperial wizard, Oh. Uh, he said the Mississippi Klan support, uh, salutes Alabama's Chief Justice Roy Moore for refusing to bow to the yoke of federal tyranny. He went a little bit further and said the fudge packers from Hollywood and all major news networks are in shock that the good people from the heart of Dixie are resisting their imperialist, communist, homosexual agenda. Okay, and, and that's not a fake quote. The motherfucker actually said fudge packer. Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, and imperialist, communist, homosexual agenda. Oh, well, that's a thing. This Come was on. coming from the Imperial Wizard. Yeah, but, you know, man, that, that, that guy's got like a chaotic evil alignment. I mean, yeah. He's just not a good guy at all. He, he's also encouraged uh, his, his fellow Klansmen to wear plain clothes. Uh, rationale for that is, we have made the decision that we don't want to distract attention away from the issue, as any time the Klan rides, we are made the issue by the Zionists controlling the media. Um, no, that just happens because you're fucking assholes. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as people see that the clan supports something, they realize, oh shit, that's the wrong side. I don't think that's going to happen in, the, in this time. <laughs> man. Oh I man. I don't, I don't know. I, I just have a, a feeling that, uh, brother Roy Moore is part of a secret organization that, you know, we should just leave unnamed for now. The, yeah. Just a feeling. Yeah, it's it's quite possible. <laughs> uh, however, the whole bringing in of the the clan might alienate the the other. What is it? Seventeen judges. Well, yeah. You know, the realistically, this is Mississippi. Most of those judges are probably Alabama. Or this is Alabama. Most of those judges are probably white and clan members themselves. <laughs> uh, it's. It might alienate the black voters. Yeah. Of course, the Supreme Court did overturn most of the Voting Rights Act, so I'm sure Alabama's going to make sure there are no black voters next year. Uh, yeah, I mean, those only get those don't get checked very often, and apparently they're not due have to be checked for a while. Um, I was reading an article about that shit. Um, they, like, define voting districts really badly make better yeah. be the id laws yep so if you're black and in alabama your vote probably doesn't count just do something fuck i'm not saying whatever just like start a group you know yeah fight get for your voted, rights go, get voted in uh run <laughs> for office yes hey support campaigns of people who aren't racist douchebags and homophobes and idiots. And if you're not gay and you're a guy, don't marry a guy. And if you're not gay and you're a woman, don't marry a woman who gives a fuck. Yeah. Go on about your life. Yeah. (laughs) I think the energy drinks kicking in. (laughs) Awesome. And so, all right. What I I already alluded to that the, uh, the, the Supreme court, Refusing to issue a stay. They went a little bit further than that. Uh, Scalia and Thomas were the two dissenting votes in the decision to not grant a stay and actually wrote a three-page dissent 
Uh, typically, when it comes to stays, they just vote yes or no, and nobody signs their name to anything or says anything. Uh, this time, they went ahead and said, basically flat out, that... Basically, well, as, this shit's going to pass. Yeah, as Thomas wrote, <laughs> uh, that, that based on this, uh, may well be seen as a signal of the court's in, intended uh, resolution on the constitutionality of gay marriage bans. They meant this to be a grave warning, but no, they're just admitting to the, the inevitable. But, yeah, they're admitting defeat. Uh, they haven't been able to get a stay passed in quite a few months. Uh, it's it's, a, it's a, a done deal. Was it, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg actually went on and had an interview about this, too. She watched a talk about this. And she's essentially saying it's a fucking done deal, too. Yeah. Which basically never happens. Well, the you know, uh, of, you know, so many of these Supreme Court justices coming out and, and speaking. Yeah. The, the, on an issue that hasn't even been decided yet. Uh, well, but it, it has. They they decided quietly. They refused to hear appeals. Right. And they pushed it back and said that, you know, it stands. Yeah. They, Alabama. they have stopped it granting stays. The only appeal that has taken up or that they have taken up is the one circuit court that got it wrong. That's it. They're not yeah. taking up Idaho's appeal. For the uh, against the Ninth Circuit, nice. They're just taking the one for you know Michigan and Ohio and and dealing with that one, the only one that's wrong. So in all <laughs> practicality, gay marriage will be the law of the land in June. Fucking a. And it'll be about goddamn time, and then we'll be able to stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> if only that were the case, and everybody could just go about it, go on about their lives, but. I don't think that'll be the case. If you you follow the the look at the what what happened with the the interracial marriage ruling, yeah. Once that came down, it was not popular in the states it applied to, mostly the South. Sure, sure. Is everybody got over it? Yeah, more or less, but uh, there was a little bit of straggling for a couple of years. But there also wasn't a Fox News channel. That is true. I, I think that'll be a, a talking point for a few more years to come. Hmm. Yeah, they'll probably have a, a story on gay divorces and Oh yeah. That you know, that horrible there's there's actually already uh well there's been a lot of these uh, stories about kids that were raised by gay parents and how their lives are ruined and like really Just, Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I mean fuck. If you're adopted by gay parents, you know they really fucking want you. Uh-huh. I mean, they had to fucking fight for your ass. Yeah. Think about that when you're rebelling. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's move to a, a fun little short story. Not even a story. Just going to say it, it, it. And This one tickles me. Let it hang down there. deep. Yeah. The Southern Poverty Law Center has labeled... Ben Carson, famed Adventist pediatric neurosurgeon and possible 2016 presidential candidate mm -hmm. and Tea Party favorite. Mm -hmm. They have labeled him an anti LGBT. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right after we recorded this, they went ahead and pulled that and apologized for it, but went ahead and just had to leave that part in. So now back to the news. Uh, moving on to a, another awesome, awesome win from the. Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, they took up a, a case for several uh, homosexuals who sued over gay conversion therapy. And the ruling that came down from the judge uh, is that Jonah, uh, Jews offering new alternatives for healing, violated New Jersey's Consumer Fraud Act. That's so badass. Yeah. Uh, they ruled that... These therapists can't tell clients they have a mental disorder because it's, it's not. gay is not a mental disorder that they right. can't say that they can be cured because they don't have a disorder and that they can't publish success rates because they're not even keeping track of any numbers. There's no factual basis to calculate these statistics. 
there's the NOAA statistics, their success rates that they were talking about, you know, weren't even theirs. They were, they were from somebody else's numbers. Yeah. Um, nice little tidbit. Um, again, from the Southern Poverty Law Center, the decision is bound to have far reaching legal impact. Um, that was from David Dignelli, uh, the deputy director, deputy legal director for the SPLC. Yeah. Man, I mean, can't wait to see the ripples from this fucker. Well, and, and to, to read from the, the, the ruling, mm. uh, it is a misrepresentation and violation of the Consumer Fraud Act in advertising or selling conversion therapy services to describe homosexuality not as being a normal variation of human, human sexuality, but as being a mental illness, disease, or disorder. I would love to see this kind of of reasoning be applied to alternative medicine. What is the uh, the giant book of medicine that like DCMV or uh I think you're thinking of the DSM? Yeah. And that's yeah. the the uh psychiatric or psychological uh book. Yeah. And they used to say that uh being gay was a medical condition a, a mm-hmm. problem, but that hasn't been in there for decades. Yeah, that was taken out in the 70s. Yeah. It it's about time that fucking, you know, filters through the rest of society. Yeah. The, uh, the, like the one quacks part like Noah, Jonah, the, the one part that does, I think is still in there and it's quite controversial as to on both sides as to whether or not it should be in there is, is, uh, transgender. Hmm. Uh, one of the best arguments for keeping it in there is, uh, g- and they, in that case, they call it gender identity disorder mm-hmm. that, that gives you access to insurance coverage for hormones and sex change operations. Oh shit. Shit. What's her name? Um, she's in the, uh, part of the WikiLeaks, wasn't it? The federal. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea Manning, Chelsea Manning just got, uh, the okay. So that she's getting her hormone treatments again. Yeah. And that's a federal case right there. That's got to have some echoing effects also. Mm hmm. And moving along, the FFRF has filed a lawsuit uh, against the Emanuel County School System in Swainsboro, Georgia. Sounds like a bastion of reason. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the, the, the reason for the suit uh, is because uh, the the Doe children. Yeah. Just like John and Jane Doe. Jamie Doe's uh, teacher. Cell Thompson would ask the students to bow their heads, fold their hands, and pray, leading the class in a call and response prayer. God, our Father, we give thanks for our many blessings. Amen. Uh, Jesse Doe's first grade teacher, Katrine Bright, uh, had a daily prayer along the lines of, God is great. Let us thank you for our food. Thank you for our daily prayer. Thank you. Amen. The parents first learned about this in August of 2014, and they called the principal uh, the teachers responded by making the Doe children leave their classrooms and sit in the hallway while the rest of the class prayed. Right. That's not awkward or ostracizing the kids. And Jesse, who was in first grade, uh, described it as the teacher using her mean voice when telling her to go mm. to the hallway. Uh, they started getting teased by classmates who thought that they were being punished for not praying. And... <laughs> Jamie started to complain regularly about feeling uncomfortable in class. It got bad enough her parents had to pull her out of school. <laughs> uh, Jesse was pressured all semester to pray and even had his uh, teacher hold him back from recess to explain her personal Christian beliefs at length and to say that Jesse's mother was a bad person for not believing in God. Nice. By the end of the semester, Jesse was joining in the classroom prayers. That's got, that has no here or there, whether the parents believed. I mean, they could be just fucking secularists that are still believers. I don't, I don't know if they are, if the parents are or not non-believers. Yeah. Um, and that's not, that, that, that shouldn't even enter into the equation. Um, I do just take up one little quick point here. Uh, that first grade teacher, Katrine, she, uh, Second part of that line, thank you for our daily prayer. Isn't that like saying thank you for thanking you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just thank you for allowing us to get away with doing something that's so blatantly unconstitutional. 
<laughs> thank you for allowing us to thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, all right. Mm. Oh, Dan Barker, please win this one. We can use use a a win. Yeah. <laughs> Come uh, on, to, Taylor, you Taylor. To quote Dan on this one, it should not be necessary for FFRF to sue over such an obvious violation of specific Supreme Court decisions barring devotions from our public schools. No child in our secular school system or their parents should be subjected to prayer or stigmatized when their parents speak up to defend the Establishment Clause. But unfortunately, it appears a lawsuit will be the only way to protect the freedom of conscience of these young children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that school yeah. is going to lose. They are, and I hope it's painful. Yeah. Even though that fucking, I'm sure this school district doesn't have a lot of money. Rural Georgia, <laughs> I highly doubt it. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And for something, sorry, go ahead. We'll move on (laughs) and wrap up with a fun little story out of Congress. And yes, occasionally funny things happen in Congress. Uh, (laughs) Representative Joe Barton of Texas has a bill to lift the ban on exporting crude oil. Hmm. This bill had been assigned number six, six, six. Oh, shit. And he actually went to the effort of getting the number changed. Uh, his, his spokesman, Sean Brown, said, it quickly became clear that the original bill number carried many different negative connotations. We decided it would be best to change it so people will focus on the content of the legislation, not the bill number. <laughs> Man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> is it just me, or would that guy look perfect in the whole KFC colonel's get-up with the whole white suit? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for some examples oh, on, on previous uh, House Resolution 666, uh, the 112th Congress uh, used that one to express their sense that Medicare should not be changed for any citizens over 55. And the 113th Congress, House Resolution 666, uh, reaffirmed the authority of the Secretary of the Interior to take land into trust for Indian tribes. Hmm. But well, those appara- actually sounded pretty good. Yeah. But apparently, uh, Barton decided that rather than let it just slide through with nobody noticing the number of the bill, because it's just a frickin' number, that he'd make a big deal about it and get everybody's attention. Well, I have a feeling this is probably a bill he wouldn't actually want to have noticed, but, you know, his Christian sensibilities got the better of him. Yeah. I think he'd probably rather have that one sneak through. <laughs> uh huh. And, and kind of hold backfires on on the what the statement said. The whole intent of this was so that people focus on the content, not the bill number. Yeah, everybody's focusing on the bill number now. Well, they're going to focus on the content a lot harder than they were. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys. Yeah. And that's it for politics and religion. Uh, we now have uh, feedback. First off, from Anonymous, uh, the person who tipped us off on the story in episode 80 about the uh, Texas elementary school students being used in Christian propaganda materials. Uh, We got an update. Uh, The event was set for Monday and got pushed back a couple days due to scheduling conflict. We have a feeling it was more than that. They did go through with it. They were very careful not to have anything with the station's motto, God listens, displayed anywhere, though. They usually have the DJs wearing a shirt with the motto on it. The microphone cameras and equipment all usually have it plastered on them. And they show up to the school with a huge God listens van. None of that happened today. This is a small victory at least. Uh, They they went ahead and sent the letter with the more than 1,200 signatures on the petition uh, to the school and the district. They're hoping to get some progress on this. And yeah, uh, Anonymous, please... uh, yeah, let us know how this turns out. Yeah, send send us anything you got. You know, this is we're more than happy to to listen to it and you know keep keep you on our prayers, man, or something. <laughs> we'll do better than that. We'll we'll keep talking about you to people. <laughs> there you go, even better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then about episode eighty one, uh, we got a couple tweets from. Unbuckling the Bible Belt. Uh, they're on Twitter at Seethen Heathen. That's S E E T H I N H E A T H E N. 
at Atheist Nomads, at The Porn Stash. I fucking love hashtag in search of. Got the box set for my birthday last year. Great interview, guys. Nice. And from Zacrilege, also on Twitter, at Zacrilege. Nice work by Atheist Nomads getting at The Porn Stash on their latest show. Did I mention that I was just on the uh, Zacrilege podcast? I believe you did. Okay, well, if I didn't, check it out. Yeah. Um, and I think you're going to be on there pretty soon yourself. Yes, next week. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I'll be live, hang out on air uh, Tuesday at, uh, evening. Uh, I'll post the information about it to the Facebook page and Twitter, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, I'll be, All right. Uh, that'll be Tuesday the, Tuesday the 24th. Well, he loves beer, and so do you. Should be a good talk. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to uh, get in touch with us, you can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com. Call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666, or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter, facebook.com slash atheistnomads or at atheistnomads. And speaking of Facebook, we should give a shout out to our new Facebook team. Yeah. Uh, pretty much, I don't think none of them want to be mentioned. <laughs> uh but hey, uh, we're posting a lot of new stories, and they are seriously kicking some ass. So, you know, get on there, get part of the conversation, and uh, let us not let us know what you think of the new uh, uh, news explosion. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. Uh, and oh shit, our hundred by a hundred. Uh, we are at eighty two now. We are trying to get one hundred dollar donations per episode by episode one hundred, and. We have some magical people that are helping us along the way. I'll say that for sure. Yes, we are up to $42 per episode now. Which, you know, we we really didn't try and push money for a long time, but damn it, I'm sorry. It takes so many to run this shit, and we would like to be able to, you know, do stuff to make the show better for all of us and then start helping people. We do need to give some shout-outs, though. Uh, we got amazingly amazing uh, donations from Alf and Cassandra Clare. Uh, we, we'd gotten one-time donations a few times, you know, five, ten bucks. These were amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we got a new nuclear sponsor, Latanya, and a new bronze sponsor, Hugh. Latanya. Hugh. Thank you, guys. Holy shit. Seriously, it matter- it, we, we appreciate it. You know, uh, from the, the bottoms of my cockles or heart, something. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, um, yeah, shit. This is kind of getting exciting. I, I can actually see where we can, you know, start getting a Kiva going and, you know, actually doing some, doing some good. Yeah. It's yeah. Kind of fun. Yeah, and have some money coming into hookers and blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, gay hookers. What? Sorry. Alrighty. Well, that's uh, <laughs> wraps up this episode. So we'll be at you in another week with an awesome interview. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find us online at www.atheistnomads.com. Contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com or leave us a voicemail message at 541 541- Two zero three zero six six six. You can also like us on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes, Zoom, or wherever else you find the podcast. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads.